That's right. Let's move over to yeah. off-market deals. Which I and... guess kind of goes in with what we were just talking about, you know, be honest. Yep. You're not a salesman. You're trying to solve problems at the end of the day. Yeah. And one of the best strategies that comes from one of the best creative uh, finance. Uncle Bill Cook. Uncle Bill Cook. If you don't know who Bill Cook is, he's an excellent teacher. And him and his wife, Kim, do a great job of teaching creative deal structuring. Mm -hmm. And one of the best tools that I have learned from him is creating a T-bar. So let's say you find an off-market deal through one of the various forms of finding it. And you get into their house and you're sitting at the kitchen table. And the best thing you can do is to sit down and draw a T-bar where you're going to draw on a sheet of paper a cross, right? And on top, it's, well, it's going to look more like a T, but the you're, on top, you're going to have the, where am I? Your current position. And then where do they want to be? Future right. position. So you ask, why would you sell a nice house like this? And that's from Pete. Pete Fortunato, yeah. Peter Fortunato, um, another yeah. amazing creative real estate so investor. You come to me, you're wanting to buy my house. Yeah. I say, Hey, Tiffany, um, I, I love your home. Why would you want to sell such a nice house like this? Well, I can't keep up with the payments. All right. So that goes on the, where am I currently? Yeah. Future position may be, I don't want payments, right? Or I want to be in a different house. Or you figure out what solves that problem right. for them. You figure out what you're going to put on that right-hand right. side. And on the left-hand side, I might ask, what do you like about this house? Because that's I like gonna, the location. That's going to help me to identify how can I help them. Right. Because I might have another house. I like the location, but it's too big for what I need right there now. There we go. She, she needs to downsize. So I'm going to put on the right-hand side, same location, smaller house. Right. And smaller payments. Smaller payments. So you build this T-bar with where are they right now? What What is hurting? Why are they struggling? Why did they call you to come over to buy their house in the first right. place? And then you're going to list all that out. And on the right-hand side, you're going to work together. You're mm -hmm. going to have a conversation of what looks amazing for you. What would work and make you happy and whole? Right. And then you go into the figuring out how can I buy this to make it make sense for me and to help it make sense for right. you. And price is not always the end all be all with That's that it. kind of situation. Sometimes it's, you know, a tired landlord that just wants to be done with the house and they've got a ton of appreciation. I mean, our last house that we sold, we were fine taking a little bit lower on the price because we just emotionally had a newborn and needed yeah. to be done with that house. And, and we did accept an offer about 15 grand below where it should have been. Right. And we were just happy that, you know, it was gone. We had built in so much equity in that house that we were willing to give away some of it yeah. for the ease of letting it go. Right. And it just didn't work out to fit in our portfolio. It was just, yep. it was just a house that didn't fit right. our buy box for investment properties. Right. It was a great house for us. But price but, is not always the most important thing for a seller. That's right. That's right. That's, that's absolutely true. So you, you're in this person's house and you're making an off market offer. Now, these offers, they don't include due diligence. They don't include, you know, earnest money and all that. It is simply, what can we agree to that works for us? Right. Because there could be a whole podcast season or 10 whole hot podcast seasons on off-market deal right. strategizing and structuring. Um, but some quick things that you might be able to formulate and build with the seller are, you know, maybe they keep the mortgage in their name. You take over the payments. You have another house that fits for them. They move into that one. You let them rent it from you. Yeah. Or you sell it to them. You want to carry it to yeah. them. They want to carry it to you. you. There's so many ways to get at it. Mm -hmm. Learn from the people, the gray haired men, as Courtney said. Yeah. On your previous episode, Courtney was interviewed yep. and uh, learn the stuff. Don't just go out there and start making offers that you yeah. can't deliver on. And be careful who you choose as a teacher. Yeah. Make sure it's all above board. Yeah. Our perspective is we like the, the old gray haired men because they've been through the recessions. They've seen a lot and we sure. have mentors who see some of the younger gurus which i know we're sitting here younger but i'm not a guru i know you're not a guru you are yeah. a gray hair man though so oh you're not nice yeah <laughs> <laughs> but they they've been through cycles one of our mentors sent out a newsletter and said hey take this strategy and tweak it to do this and that keeps it above board yeah so just i guess just be careful with who you follow yeah 